use the banded sumo. Um, super awesome exercise for the posterior chain. You know, I love posterior exercises, figuring out a way to strengthen it without necessarily just squatting. So what I've got set up right now is I've got two bands wrapped around the barbell, I try to find both new bands so they're equal. From here, I'm gonna set my barbell up. So it's like in my sumo stance, the bands aren't super tight yet. There's a little bit of slack in them. I'm gonna set up my sumo stance, but I'm gonna give myself about an extra half inch to an inch away from the bar. So when I come down, my weight is in my heels. I'm gonna set my hands. From here, I'm gonna roll the bar back and create tension on the bands. As soon as I do that, I'm also driving my knees out. So as soon as I'm set, I can pull the bar up, okay? So it looks like this. At the top, it's gonna to wanna to be pulling you forward. So we need to make sure that we continue spreading the floor with our feet, we continue driving our knees out, and keeping the weight in your heels towards the back of your foot. So we work the hamstring and the glutes, and we don't allow the barbell to pull us forward. You also have to engage your lats and your midsection to make sure everything stays nice and tight and also connected throughout this entire lift. The other thing to think about with the sumo deadlift is making sure your shins stay vertical. So we wanna make sure we're driving our knees out, pushing our butt back when we're sinking. We're not driving our knees forward at all, but our shins should stay vertical and the bar should travel straight up close to the body. The second biggest misconception I think I see in a sumo deadlift is gonna be where people put their hands. We set our feet wide, toes are towards the front of the bumper, and then we come in and we put our hands super narrow. This is not a strong position. You wanna make sure that your hands are about a normal grip toward deadlift. So if my feet were in, I typically set up right on the knurling. Could maybe come in a tiny bit, but I do wanna make sure that in the sumo deadlift, I'm making contact with my hands on the knurling and I'm not super in tight here. So that's one thing to definitely check for. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the Bulgarian split squat, good morning. Um, it's really awesome, I love the single leg work. I like to incorporate a lot of it, especially after squatting or pulling, just to make sure everything's firing equally. So the way it works is you're gonna need a bench or something to place up your back leg. In the Bulgarian split squat, I'm typically about here in the good morning. I bring my foot out maybe another inch or two, um, just to have a little bit of a bigger split. Then I'm gonna bring the kettlebell right into a goblet hold. From here, all of the weight is in my front leg. I'm gonna have a soft bend in my knee, and I'm gonna think about engaging my midsection as I essentially reach my hips back like a good morning, keeping everything nice and tight, drive through my heel, and try to squeeze my butt, keeping my big toe down ideally. So one more time, I think about almost sliding my femur back into my pelvis, or just pushing my hips back. As my chest slowly comes forward, I feel a good burn in my hamstring and glute pushing through the floor to get up and out. So again, when I'm in the loaded position, I wanna think about driving my heel through the floor, making sure I'm only feeling everything in my glute and my hamstring, my midsection staying tight to support my back. So another thing I like to think about is I imagine myself doing like a regular RDL. If you cut your body in half, what would you be thinking about? So whichever leg is on the ground, so if it's my right foot, I wanna make sure I keep my three points of contact between my big toe, the outside of my pinky toe, in my heel. I'm also slightly, almost like I'm trying to spread the floor with the foot or screw it into the mat to make sure I have an active connection with the floor. And then with my knee, I never want my knee to fall inside of my big toe. So my shin is staying vertical. And just like if I was doing a regular RDL or a regular good morning or a squat, I wanna think about that knee slightly tracking out over that big toe so we're not caving in at any point. Okay, so you will see us do some sort of core or ab variation four to five times a week. Um, we typically put it on the end and we do it a little bit heavier, which is gonna be different from a lot of the, a lot of the other stuff that you're seeing. Um, we like to put it on the end and make sure that it is heavy and that we can take our time and work through it and get the benefits out of it that we need. So today we're doing the oblique kettlebell side bend. Um, with the oblique kettlebell side bend, I would recommend working up, but it should be something that's 
you know, moderate to challenging by the end of the 12 to 15 reps to where you're feeling a nice good burn. For me today, I'm using a 53 pound kettlebell. Um, so what's gonna happen is I stand up with my kettlebell. So making sure everything is square. From here, kind of like a deadlift, if you just wanna make sure, pick up our kettlebell. Next, I'm gonna think about sliding it down my right side. So I'm actually extending over on my left or crunching my right side. And then I'm gonna think about crunching hard with the opposite oblique. So kettlebell slides down and then I crunch hard. We wanna make sure that when we're coming up, we're not overextending too much to the opposite side. We're not rotating as the kettlebell slides down. We're staying in line, thinking about extending, and then I'm quickly contracting this opposite oblique, and that's where I should feel the burn. A really great exercise for many reasons, uh, like we talked about adding weight, so it's a muscle. Your obliques are muscles, your core is a muscle, you've got a muscle group in there. We need to make those stronger. You don't see a lot of times um, programs that have any weight added to those midsection movements, so we like to add the weight to make sure that we are getting stronger and we can use the muscles the way that we're supposed to be doing and they're gonna support us in our CrossFit. Um, the other reason I love this is we're in the sagittal plane, so in CrossFit we do a lot of hinging. We stay in this frontal plane. We're traveling forwards, we're traveling backwards. We're not hardly ever moving side to side. So this is getting us out of the frontal plane, forcing us to move side to side, um, which can just be super awesome for performance and functional movement. How often during the day do you move side to side? We rotate, we grab things. We wanna make sure we're strong in those positions. All right, and a really good finisher, if you've done a heavy back day, a lot of deadlifts, whatever it is, um, is gonna be Hamstring curls. I like to do these in the prone position, so lying on the ground, um, so I can focus on driving my hips into the ground, making sure that I'm not breaking at the hip, and then I bring my knees and my feet together and pull my heels towards my butt. Um, for setting up, I like to take the band here, and then I use a monster walk band, or a lot of times you see these for people's glute activation, and I put it directly through, so now I'm even, and the band doesn't tear up my ankles. For a heavy deadlift day, um, all of the blood is probably sitting somewhere in your back. Your back might feel a little bit tight. So it's really awesome to end with these. They don't need to be super heavy, but we're doing a set of 100 to finish the day. And the goal is to pull some of the blood maybe from the back down into the hamstrings um, and just kind of flush some of that blood that maybe we built up throughout our training session. And then I'll lie down. Again, focus. You can look down, you can look forward, whatever you want. Um, but I think about making sure my hips stay pressed into the ground, make sure my knees are together, my feet are together, and then I start cranking away at my 100.